So, Assalamu alaikum. Hey guys, uh, welcome back to Shuk Samawa. My name is Shuk Ayah Muhammad Salih. So, if you're a channel subscriber, thank you so much for being here. And if this is your first time on my channel, I'm so glad to have you. You can subscribe to the channel and be part of the family by clicking on the subscription button down below and the notification bell beside it so that you can get notified whenever a new video is being uploaded. Oh my god, you guys, today the video is a special one because we are having a collaboration video with my YouTube sisters Ali Abalo and Maria Mujitafa and you guys you're going to love their channels because they have amazing content we have like similar content most yeah most of our contents are somehow similar because they're into lifestyle islam vlogs you know just a little bit of everything so this video was inspired by our youtube sisters Ad Ado lifestyle el sutras essentials and casa de fmg and i thought why, what 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 and i thought why not a better time to have a collaboration than in ramadan and especially in the last 10 days so i will be starting off first with maria and she's going to be talking about uh women having their monthly cycle in the last 10 days of ramadan assalamu alaikum my name is maria and the name of my channel is bits of maria it's more of lifestyle and islam and i'm excited for this collaboration as this is going to be my first time doing something like this for today, I'll be talking about how women on their period can benefit during the last 10 days of Ramadan. You know, feeling down during period in Ramadan is a common struggle many women face. You find out that your level of engagement with the high spiritual atmosphere of the month drops. There is that feeling of frustration and a lack of spirituality that sets in, though it shouldn't be the case. The good deeds account don't stop when you're on your period for the angels are continuing to write down your good deeds as long as you're doing good actions to please Allah. Most important thing to remember is that our menses is part of Allah's creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Atin verse 4, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ we have certainly created man in the best of stature. This is what Allah has ordained for all the daughters of Adam. Now, how do we keep our spirits high and positive during this time? You can increase remembrance of Allah. Zikr has a special way of touching the heart. Remember Allah as much as you can. Glorify Him night and day. You can also set yourself daily targets so that you can remember Allah as much as you can. You should also increase your supplication. The beauty of supplication is that you can make it any time Speaking directly to your Lord is one of the most intimate ways to connect with Him. You can make excessive du'a to Allah. Many of us rush our du'as and quite often our hearts are not present while we're making du'a. We shouldn't let our hearts wander while we're making du'a and we should also concentrate more. Just imagine Allah in front of you while you're making du'a. So we should humble ourselves in front of Him in a state of humility. Use of the best times that du'a are answered like the last third of the night. Yes, you can still wake up even if you're on your period. It's a great opportunity to seek closeness from Allah. Wake up and spend time making du'a. And don't forget the most important du'a, which is Allahumma innaka afuwun tuhibul afwa fa'afu'ani. The next thing is to increase charity. Spend in the way of Allah as much as you can for charity wipes out sins as water extinguishes fire. You can involve yourself in charity work in your local communities. You can also use the extra time and energy that you have from not fasting to gain more Islamic knowledge. Listen to podcasts, read articles. You can also listen to the tafsir of the Quran to reflect upon the verses of Allah and to have a deeper meaning of the Quran. You can also listen to the recitation of the Quran. It's the perfume of the soul, the karma of the heart. Take time out of your day to listen to it. Maybe if you're driving or you're doing anything else, you can still listen to it. The thing is that a woman should never feel that she's not able to gain good deeds just because she's on her period. There is nothing stopping you from gaining immense reward. All that's required from you is your effort, your right intentions and sincerity in your actions. May Allah enable all women on their period do much good. As we all know, the last 10 days of Ramadan is a very, is very, very special because in the last 10 days of Ramadan, there is a, na, there is a night we call Laylat al-Qadr, which each Muslim yearns to witness that night. And inshallah, we are all going to witness that night. And may Allah answer all our prayers and forgive all our sins. Ya Rabbi, Ya Rabbi. So, I will be talking about some distractions that we should try to avoid during this last 10 days. Because like I said, it's such a special time that we need to really focus. <laughs> but at times you know we are humans sometimes we get distracted so i'm just here to remind us you know we should try and limit those distractions the first one i'm going to be talking about is social media mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my god social media i mean not even in ramadan generally social media can be a huge distraction to most people 
sometimes a lot of people complain about time management how they're not able to manage their time and so you just try to look at their schedule you realize that they spend most of the time on social media <laughs> and many at times not all of the time many at times we tend to um you know we don't we're not really going to we're not even scrolling through the social media to benefit from things we're just mindlessly scrolling we are all guilty of that at times right <laughs> So yeah, but in Ramadan, we need to be ready to sacrifice because of course in Ramadan, you know, we are, we are limited from many things. First of all, we are limited from eating until an appointed time. You know, we are also limited from um, saying bad words, fighting with people and all negative things. We are supposed to try to uh, avoid them during Ramadan and even after Ramadan, of course. So someone might ask, okay, what if I'm a business owner? What if I have to use social media even in the last 10 days? Well, that's fine, okay, especially if your income comes through there, it's fine. But what you have to do is that to at least know when you should be online and when you should be offline. You shouldn't consume your time, you know, in uh, in pushing your business goals and everything and not giving much time to your ibadah. Okay, so just try to find a balance or try to find ways that, you know, you're not going to be compromising your ibadah because you need to uh, achieve this thing. And if you know there are things that can wait till after Ramadan, even if, let's say, it's, it's a business opportunity or something uh, that it's on social media that you can actually wait till after Ramadan for you to either watch or to learn from or to do anything, then why don't we just wait? I mean, think about it. We have 365 days in a year right okay so if you minus two six if you minus 10 out of 265 days it's going to be 255 days so you just think of it in this way like okay if i try to just sacrifice 10 days out of this 265 days and devote my time to devote most of my time to worshiping allah i mean isn't that worth it when you look at it that way just 10 days out of 255 days is so so much worth it. it's beyond what it that we shouldn't even think twice about whether or not we should uh, focus on these days okay feel like your social media platform is such a huge distraction that you can hardly uh, avoid then maybe the best thing is just for you to delete all the apps you know for now and don't try to you know re-download them just delete them and just devote every single time that you have uh to this uh, last 10 days okay number two is eight preparations oh mm. <laughs> you know i think one of the things that kind of like gladdens us you know after ramadan is the fact that oh we're going to celebrate it's eid everyone is getting ready for eid everyone is getting his eid clothes ready you know the matching shoes the matching bags the foods the family gatherings and all the nice stuff there so we you know we we tend to anticipate this day of course which is normal and it's actually um good to do that but sometimes we try to dwell so much in the preparations that we don't really give much time to our ibadah and i know this can actually be lots uh can be really challenging especially for uh, those with families maybe as a mom you'll have to make sure your your eat your children's eat clothes are ready so you have to make sure that all the food items that you need is ready before the day like a lot a lot of other things i know it can be really challenging so i I think one of the tips that I can give with, uh, in the case of people like that like is when you're uh, busy doing all this eight prep, try as much as possible to be um, busy yourself with some act of worship like doing azkar and then also saying this prayer, Allahumma inna ka afuwan tuhibbul afu anni. Like don't just focus on you know the eight preparation and sideline the act of worship because your excuse is okay I'm prepping for eight and I have to do this. No, don't do that. Bring the two together as much as you can. Okay, good luck and thank you. Oh, hey guys, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed Maria and Alia's part. So my part is going to be about post-Ramadan. I'll be starting off with uh, the first one, which is do not let everything you have done in Ramadan go down the drain on the day of Eid. Yes, the day of Eid is a time for us to celebrate, is a period for us of happiness and jubilation. But we kind of, you know, go over and beyond, above and beyond on the day of Eid, all in the name of celebration. Yes, it is okay for you to want to celebrate. It is okay for you to want to feel happy on the day of Eid, but we shouldn't engage in those actions that are frowned upon by Allah Azza wa Jal. Ramadan has been a training ground for us, you know, to perfect ourselves, be better, and then just, yeah, you know, be, be a better version of yourself. But on the day of Eid, you want to keep that celebration, you know, within the range that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is okay with. You don't want to go over that so that you do not incur the wrath of Allah just a day after Ramadan. A better way to explain this is like, just for me to give an example, you have spent the you have spent thirty days, you know, building your house, laying the foundation, putting on the bricks, paint, plaster, everything, and the day that you're going to leave 
in the house you just set it on fire and then just let everything go down the drain i mean that doesn't make sense so you want to keep all the you know acts of ibadah the hardship the hard work you have done in ramadan you want to continue with all all of that till the rest of the year and so please do not engage in activities that are frowned that are frowned upon by allah Azza wa and so the other thing that i want to share with us in this video is uh another bag of goodies yeah after ramadan ramadan is not the only month for bonuses ramadan is not the only month for bonanza there are other islamic months that contain a lot of bonanza and guess what the next month is shawwal so when you fast your 30 days of ramadan and then you go on further with um adding six days in shawwal it is reported from the prophet that you will be rewarded as if you have fasted for the whole year i mean guys come on this is bonus you have all these bonuses in Ramadan and then you have all another bonus in Shawwal. It's like you're being given free reward. So let's endeavor to carry on with our Sita Shawwal. There have been different opinions of scholars whether or not you should start with your Sita Shawwal or you should pay off your fast if you have missed some fasting in Ramadan. But I feel like it all depends on which one works better for you. If maybe, for example, you have missed some fast due to maybe illness or something and you haven't recovered yet, even after Ramadan, you can start off with your Sita Shawwal just for you to benefit from that. And then later on through the year, you pay up your fast that you have missed in Ramadan. And other scholars have the opinion that you can start off with anything, depending on which one works better for you. So another thing that I want to call out for, uh, uh, attention onto is ladies posting their adornment of Eid. Yes, everyone wants to get glammed up, glammed up on Eid. You want to look dope, you want to look fly, but let's not in the process of, you know, looking fly, looking good on Eid, incur the wrath of Allah Azza wa Jal. We know that in Islam that the only thing that is permissible for an unmahram to see is your face and your palms. So when you take a picture of your, you know, when you go to the salon and make your hair, then you take a picture and then either send it to an unmahram or post it on social media. Let's do our best to refrain from incurring the wrath of Allah even in the month of Ramadan before it And So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I feel so happy that we did this collaboration together. I'm looking forward to more collaboration with you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up leave a comment down below and share our videos and don't forget to subscribe to their channels as well thank you so much to khairan meet you guys in my next video